More than a year ago, I uploaded a short showing SG90 servo driven by standalone 8085. Few months later, I uploaded another short about DJI Air to Airdrop device, and in its title, I said that this will be my next video. But most of the time, things don't go as planned. I was busy, and the Airdrop video is taking a lot of time to film and edit. That's why I decided to make a separate video about how to drive a servo using ATtiny85. Driving the servo was just a test for that airdrop mechanism. Let's start with the servo. SG90 is the most popular, most used and one of the cheapest servos. With its small dimensions, weight of only 11 grams, an impressive theoretical power of 2.5 kg per centimeter, which means it can pull a weight of 2.5 kg when it is suspended at a distance of 1 cm from the shaft center, it's great for small and lightweight projects. There are three wires on the SG90 servo. Brown and red are used to power the servo and the yellow one is the controlling wire. If you check the SG90 datasheet, you will see that for control it needs 50 Hz of PWM signal or 1 second divided by 50 is 0 0.02 seconds or 20 milliseconds length of pulse with a duty cycle of 1 to 2 milliseconds. If the on time of the PWM pulse is 1 millisecond, the servo arm moves to 0 degrees. 1.5 millisecond on time will move the arm to 90 degrees and 2 milliseconds on time will move the arm to 180 degrees. 80 85 has two PWM pins. We can use one of those to drive our servo. In the Arduino ID they are referenced as PB0 and PB1. To prepare the 80 85 for programming using the Arduino ID, Check my video named Preparing Blank 80 tiny 85 for Programming, where I explain in details how to do this by installing the Micronucleus bootloader. You will find link to that video in description. Now to explain one important Micronucleus bootloader functionality. Since the 80 tiny 85 has only 8 pins, out of which 2 are used for supplying power, that leaves us with only 6 usable pins for our project and we also need two pins to connect the chip to USB for programming, which later can be used as functional pins. To free up pins, once you power on the chip, the Micronucleus bootloader will wait for 6 seconds for USB connection. And if there is no connection in those 6 seconds, then the code we uploaded to the chip will start executing. This is why, when uploading program to the ATtiny, from the Arduino IDE, you need to first click to upload the code and you need to connect the chip to the USB after you see this message in the debug window, otherwise the upload will fail. Now that we know how the Micronucleus bootloader works on 80 tiny 85 and how the SG90 servo works, we can continue with programming. We can write custom code that will deal with the required PWM configuration for the SG90 servo, but we are keeping it simple in this example and luckily they are libraries that will simplify our code. The included servo library in the Arduino IDE doesn't work with 80tiny85, so in this example I will use library called Adafruit Soft Servo instead. First we need to install the library. Then we can import it in our code. Now we need to instantiate the library object so that we can use it in our code. Next we need to attach the control pin and tell the library which physical pin we will use to control our servo. The Adafruit soft servo library can output the required PVM signal to any of the digital pins, but in this example I will use PB0. With this library, we have two methods with which we can control the server. They are write and refresh. The write method is used to set the position of the server and the refresh method is used to send the position to the server. The position can be any number from 0 to 180. 
So as an example, I will make the servo continuously cycle the servo arm from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. We can do this using a loop. We need a variable that will hold our current position, so I will declare an integer named POS. Now our loop. For POS value will start from 0, the loop will end when POS has a value of 180 and each loop the POS value will increase by 1. Inside the loop we will set the position of the servo which should be equal to the value of our POS variable. Then with refresh we will send the position to the servo. After this we need a delay. About the delay, if you check the library documentation or code, it's clearly saying that. For best results, use with timer zero interrupt to refresh all your servos once every 20 milliseconds. So in my code, I'm probably not doing this correctly by hard coding 15 milliseconds delay, but it works. Even in the example provided by the Adafruit soft servo library, where they are using the timer, they are relying on delay to send the servo position which is not ideal. Once I get my hands on an oscilloscope, I might get back to this. Back to the code. So far we made the servo arm go from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. Now let's make a loop to go back from 180 to 0 degrees. That's it. This will be our full code for this example. You can get the full code from the link in the description. Using the HW260 development board that I mentioned in the video for preparing 80 tiny 85 for programming, we can now upload the code to the chip. Click upload, wait for the message, then plug in the HW260 board to the USB. Once the upload is finished, we can connect the servo to the 80 tiny 85 like this. Another important thing that I have to mention is that you need to connect 10k resistor between 5 volts and PB3 or pin number 2, otherwise your code won't work if you use the 80 tiny 85 as a standalone. You can read more about this in this stack exchange post, link in description. Basically, this is a functionality that allows you to connect the chip to USB, it can be turned off to exclude the resistor, also this will remove the 6 second pause from the start of the program execution, but that way you won't be able to reprogram the 80 tiny 85 chip until you reinstall the default Micronucleus bootloader as explained in my other video that I mentioned earlier. That is all for this video, I hope you find it useful. Thank you for watching.